So here's something that can be kind of annoying. Remember all that stuff we said about transformers and how we can take electricity from one circuit and transfer it to another circuit, changing the voltage along the way? Well, sometimes that happens even if we don't want it to. Let's suppose I have a bunch of electronic equipment hooked up on a table, driven by AC signals. And let's suppose we have the cables for some of the equipment kind of coiled up next to the cables for some of the other equipment. Guess what? We just made a transformer that's going to take the signal from one cable and put some of it into the other, whether we like it or not. I'd like to say that's never happened to me personally, but that'd be a lie. Anyway, sometimes that's a big deal, and sometimes it's not. To get a handle on how efficiently one wire will transfer power into another wire, we're going to introduce the idea of mutual inductance. On a very deep level, mutual inductance has something in common with capacitance. Capacitance is a ratio of what you get per something spent. It describes how much charge you can get onto some plates per volt that you apply. Mutual inductance is also a ratio. It describes how much flux you'll get through one coil of wire per amp of current that you put through some other wire. In equation form, we have flux phi equals mutual inductance m times current I. Mutual inductance has its own SI unit, the Henry, a capital H. This equation by itself isn't that useful, but if we take the time derivative of both sides, something very nice happens. The time derivative of a flux is an EMF, so we get that the EMF through one coil is related to the rate of change of current in the other coil times the mutual inductance. What this means conceptually is that if you know the mutual inductance of a system and know something about the current you're feeding into that system, you can do a really quick multiplication to find out how much voltage is going to get induced in the output coil. Let's do one example of how to calculate mutual inductance. Suppose we have two coils on the same axis. One is pretty wide, with radius r1. The second coil is some distance d above the first, and is much smaller, with radius r2. The coils have numbers of turns n1 and n2 respectively. To find the mutual inductance of this system, we're going to put some current I through coil 1 and see how much flux we get through coil 2. Then we'll divide the flux by the current to get M. If we put current I through coil 1, that coil will make a magnetic field on its axis. And since we've dealt with coils before, we'll just look up how much field it makes some distance D away in the neighborhood of coil 2. Coil 2 is relatively small, so the field made by coil 1 is pretty constant across it, and we can get the flux through coil 2 by multiplying that field by coil 2's area. Now we have an expression for the flux in terms of current, and the mutual inductance is all the constants that relate those two quantities. Note that to get the mutual inductance of this pair of coils, we put a current in coil 1 and found the flux through coil 2. We could, in fact, have gone the other way and put a current in coil 2 and found the flux through coil 1. It'd be a more difficult calculation, because the field that coil 2 makes in the neighborhood of coil 1 would be very non-uniform, but we could do it. But we don't have to, thanks to a theorem that we are definitely not going to prove here today. The theorem says that the mutual inductance of a system works out to be the same regardless of which order you go in. So if you have to calculate a mutual inductance, and one order makes the calculation easier, feel free to do it that way. It's all the same in the end.